One of the main talking points I repeat on this channel a lot is that every single planet is interesting. I've probably covered over a hundred planets at this point, and I have videos that will cover hundreds more, and I have yet to find a single planet that wasn't interesting for at least one reason. However, that doesn't mean there aren't any planets I dislike. Every video I've made on this channel has been about planets I like, or at least find interesting. But not this one. This video is about the one exoplanet I do not like at all. And its name is Orbitar. Before we get too far along, I should clarify that Orbitar is disputed. There's strong evidence that it doesn't even exist, which only makes disliking it easier. It's decently likely that we named a non-existent planet, which has happened before. However, a two-planet solution might also explain the data, which means there could be two orbitars, but it's not as likely. So, there's a low chance the planet exists as I'm describing it, a high chance it doesn't exist at all, and a low chance that there are actually two planets. I'm mostly ranting about the concept of a planet rather than a planet itself. But for a while, we did think it was real. Anyways, Orbitar orbits the giant star 42 Draconis, which is officially named Fafnir. The star and the planet were named in the 2015 name Exoworlds, where over 20 exoplanets were officially named for the first time. The 2015 name Exoworlds was a bit of a mess. Several names directly broke the IAU established naming rules, and planets that turned out to not exist were named. However, from what I can tell, Orbitar was the only planet to do both at once. Not only is its name not allowed under the IAU naming rules, it might not even exist. This is my main problem with this planet. Fafnir is the name of a Norse mythological dwarf that was turned into a dragon. Per IAU naming rules, every system that gets a name must follow a singular naming theme. For example, every object in the 55 Cancri system is named after early European astronomers and telescope makers. Copernicus and its five planets, Janssen, Galileo, Brya, Harriet, and Lipperhey. The naming theme for the 40 Drew Taconis system is North Mythological Dragons and Beasts. There are plenty of examples of those things in Norse mythology they could have named the planet. Just look up Norse mythological creatures, and right there there are a whole list of perfectly fine names for this planet. But no, they chose Orbitar. Orbitar is not a Norse mythological creature. Orbitar isn't even a real word. It was completely made up, and is supposed to pay homage to the orbital operations of NASA, whatever that means. This means Orbitar breaks several naming rules. The first and most important rule when naming a planet is that the name has to mean something and be culturally significant. Orbitar doesn't mean anything, and it was made up for the competition, so it already fails there. It doesn't fit the system naming theme, that being Norse mythological creatures. And if that wasn't bad enough, the IAU literally explicitly states that you are not allowed to make up words to name a planet. It directly says on the IAU website that contrived words are not allowed and the people who proposed Orbitar directly say in their proposal that it is a contrived word. I don't know if this rule just wasn't in place in 2015 or what, but it somehow got approved. And it's not only a bad name, it's just a wasted opportunity. As I've already mentioned, there are tons of great Norse mythological creatures you could have named the planet after. Yet despite all those perfectly good names, you chose Orbitar, a name that doesn't even follow the naming system you established. Other planets also broke rules like this as well. The star Helvidios and the planet Domidium have names that don't follow a common theme. That's annoying on its own, but no system broke as many rules as Fafnir and Orbitar. This is my main problem with Orbitar. Naming things is pretty important to me. Names give the average person something to relate to, and from all the astronomy communication I've done both online, on this channel, and in real life, I have found that the average person is much more interested in the planet Phobator than the planet PSR B1257 plus 12D. Those are the same planet, but it's just much easier to get interested in a place that has a real name, not a designation. Names give difficult scientific concepts a way to be relatable to the average person, allowing more people to be informed. Which is why, if a planet has an official name, I always use it. I may not like the name Domidium, but it's still better than 51 Pegasi B. Because of this, I also think it's important to choose a good name. The benefits that come with names only happen if the name is good. I posted this on Twitter a while ago, but as an example, I really like the name of the command service module that was used on Apollo 12. They called it the Yankee Clipper, which is a perfect combination of a name that has meaning, is easier to remember, and is interesting enough to be remembered. For a planet, Falincium is a good name instead of GJ3470b. But Orbitar is not a good name. Orbitar doesn't sound like anything important. It has no character, it has no underlying meaning, it is just a name for the sake of a name existing. I still prefer over 42 Draconis B, but that's only because I will never use the scientific designations for officially named exoplanets as long as I live. The main reason I dislike the planet Orbitar is because its name is just so frustratingly uncreative. 
I can think of a hundred better names off the top of my head, and despite all of it, despite the vast number of names they could have been chosen, they chose Orbitar. It's just a wasted opportunity. Even if you wanted to keep its weird broken theme of paying homage to NASA, there are still a hundred better names. Anyways, with its name out of the way, it's time to get onto the actual planet itself. Remember, this is Orbitar as it was originally thought to exist. The real planet might be non-existent, or two different planets. Orbitar was thought to be a super Jupiter, and Fafnir is a red giant. Fafnir is less massive than the Sun, but significantly older at 9.5 billion years old, which means it's already reached the end of its life and has expanded to 21 times larger than the Sun in radius. This also makes it about 142 times brighter than the Sun. Also, interestingly, it's Venus's north star, due to Venus having a much different axial tilt than Earth. This also gives it potential for another name. Call it something Venus-related, like Venera or something, or Aeneas, sometimes considered to be the son of Venus in Roman mythology. It's already happened before, the planet Quankoa is literally just Venus in another language. There's potential for some really cool names taking inspiration from the system's relation with Venus, but I digress. Anyways, the original Orbitar candidate signal was discovered with radial velocity, and because of that, only its minimum mass is known. It was thought to be at least 3.88 Jupiter masses, with the potential to be bigger. It took about 479 days to orbit Fafnir, and is slightly further away from the star than Earth is from the Sun. Its orbit is also mildly eccentric, with an eccentricity of 0.38. However, this is pretty similar to a lot of other planets. Orbitar was thought to be a gas giant orbiting a red giant star. The red giant Ain hosts Amateru and at least 7 Jupiter mass planet on a 585 day orbit. The red giant Adasich has Hypatia, at least 11 Jupiter masses, on a very eccentric 510 day orbit. So, Orbitar isn't that unique when it comes to named exoplanets. There are already at least two others pretty similar to it, orbiting pretty similar stars on pretty similar orbits. And if that wasn't enough, Orbitar isn't even the only named exoplanet around a red giant star that has doubts about its existence. Pollux has the disputed planet Thestius. Then there's Spey, Arian, Arcus, all super Jupiter gas giants orbiting evolving giant stars. Which is another reason I don't like Orbitar. It doesn't even have anything particularly unique about it. Optimistically, there are six other planets like it, assuming all the disputed ones actually exist, which probably isn't true. Six other gas giant planets bigger than Jupiter orbiting red giant stars on orbits that take a few hundred days to complete, some of which are eccentric, all of which with official names. And all these names are better than Orbitar's. Amateru is named after the Shinto goddess of the sun. Hypatia is named after a Greek poet and philosopher. Thestius is the father of Pollux. Spe means hope in Latin. Arian is another Greek poet, and Arcus is the son of Zeus and Callisto. A lot of these names aren't great, but again, they're better than Orbitar. So, not only is Orbitar pretty similar to a bunch of other planets, it's just the worst version of those planets. Massive gas giants around red giants like this are pretty interesting, and Orbitar is just a terrible example. We know pretty much the exact same amount of information about every single one of these planets, and a few of them might not even exist, meaning Orbitar really has no redeeming qualities that set it apart. Some even have names, something that only 162 exoplanets out of thousands have. There is nothing unique about Orbitar that other, better planets don't have. Spey, Arian, Arcus, and Thestius are all disputed, unconfirmed gas giants around giant stars just like Orbitar that got official names. Amatero and Hypatia actually exist. So that's why I've had to rank every single exoplanet or exoplanet candidate I know, Orbitar would be at the bottom. Whenever I read about this planet, all I see is failed potential. It could have been interesting if it existed, which there's a strong chance it doesn't. I could literally be complaining about a planet that does not exist. There's some evidence that the discovery of Orbitar was actually just stellar noise, and a planet didn't even cause it. So there's a chance we named literally nothing. At least in Dagon's case, we accidentally named a dust cloud instead of a planet. The study that disputes Orbitar finds strong evidence that an unknown stellar process that seems to be common in giant stars caused us to detect what looks like a planet, but was actually just stellar activity. However, a two-planet solution cannot be excluded, at least as of 2021. So that might be one thing that sets Orbitar apart. It's a small chance, but not zero, that Orbitar is actually two planets masquerading as one. Though the most likely scenario is that it just doesn't exist. So not only is this planet not terribly unique from the others we know of, not only was it given a truly awful name, but it might not even have the decency to actually be real. As I said earlier, all I see in this planet is a wasted opportunity. Which is why I would consider it the worst exoplanet ever, if it's even an exoplanet at all. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.